Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video from our channel Hot News. In this video, we'll be highlighting American celebrities who have passed away today and in the last few days, along with other notable figures from around the world. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like, it means a lot to us. Thank you. And now let's begin. Thomas J. Donahue, who led the U.S. Chamber of Commerce for over two decades, has passed away at the age of 86. Donahue, known for transforming the chamber into a political powerhouse, died peacefully in Northern Virginia after a brief illness. A graduate of St. John's University and Adelphi University, Donahue's leadership was pivotal in expanding the chamber's influence, particularly in shaping policies that supported economic growth. Under his direction, the chamber began endorsing candidates in congressional elections and launched the Institute for Legal Reform to challenge policies seen as barriers to business. Donahue first joined the chamber in 1976 and returned in 1997 to take on its top roles as president and CEO. His mission was to stabilize the chamber financially and politically during a challenging period. Donahue's efforts paid off. Within a few years, he doubled the chamber's fundraising to $100 million. By 2013, the chamber's annual revenue surpassed $250 million, cementing its role as a powerful advocate for business. Known for his tireless work ethic, Donahue raised funds nationwide and reinvigorated the organization, turning it into a significant force in Washington and beyond. In 2021, he stepped down from his role, passing the leadership to Suzanne Clark. Clark praised Donahue as a strong leader and a mentor, expressing her deep gratitude for his guidance. Donahue leaves behind a legacy of transforming the chamber into one of the most influential business groups in the world. Lily Ledbetter, a champion for equal pay, passed away at 86. Her legal battle led to the landmark Fair Pay Act. Ledbetter worked at Goodyear Tire for nearly two decades in Alabama before learning she was paid significantly less than her male co-workers. The discovery came from an anonymous note which shocked and devastated her. In 1998, she filed a complaint with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, and by 1999, a lawsuit against Goodyear followed. In 2003, a federal jury awarded her $3.8 million, but the amount was drastically reduced. Goodyear's appeal led the case to the Supreme Court, which ruled against her due to a technicality. The court said her claim was filed too late, despite ongoing pay discrimination. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's dissent inspired Ledbetter to take her fight to Congress. In 2009, the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act was signed into law by President Obama, becoming his first bill as president. The law reset the deadline to file a claim with each discriminatory paycheck, marking a major victory for equal pay advocates. Obama honored her legacy, stating that Ledbetter never intended to be a trailblazer, but she changed the course of history with her determination. Former Speaker Nancy Pelosi also praised Ledbetter, calling her name synonymous with courage and progress. Despite setbacks, Ledbetter's fight helped bring fairness for future generations. She returned to the White House in 2014 as Obama signed two executive orders to further close the gender pay gap. Born in Alabama, Ledbetter died of respiratory failure. Her story was recently portrayed in a film starring Patricia Clarkson. Ledbetter leaves behind a powerful legacy, having fought for justice for all women. Ethel Kennedy, widow of Senator Robert F. Kennedy and sister-in-law to President John F. Kennedy, passed away at 96. She died this Thursday after suffering a stroke earlier in the week. Her grandson, Joe Kennedy III, confirmed the news on X, saying, It is with our hearts full of love that we announce the passing of our incredible grandmother, Ethel Kennedy. Ethel Kennedy was the matriarch of the Kennedy political family, leaving behind nine children, 34 grandchildren, and 24 great-grandchildren. Known for her devout Catholic faith, Ethel was a daily communicant and deeply dedicated to her family. Her grandson shared that the family finds comfort in knowing she is reunited with her husband, Robert F. Kennedy, as well as other family members, including her sons David and Michael, and grandchildren Maeve and Sayors. Ethel Kennedy had been hospitalized since October 8th, following the stroke, but was receiving the best possible care, according to her daughter Carrie Kennedy. Ethel's legacy is intertwined with the Kennedy family's influence in American politics. 
She stood by her husband through his campaigns, tragedies, and triumphs, and after his assassination in 1968, she continued to champion the causes he held dear. Her strength and resilience inspired her large family and many others across the nation. Ethel Kennedy's passing marks the end of an era for the Kennedy dynasty, a family that has shaped American history for decades. She will be remembered for her unwavering faith, love for her family, and dedication to justice and human rights. At the age of 89, veteran actor Nicholas Pryor passed away on Monday, October 7th, after a battle with cancer. He died peacefully at his home in North Carolina, surrounded by his family. Pryor is survived by his wife, Christina, daughter Stacy, and two grandchildren, Gus and Avril. His passing has left a profound impact on his family, friends, and fans, with tributes pouring in for the beloved actor. John Lindstrom, who co-starred with Pryor in the soap opera Port Charles, expressed his sorrow on social media, calling Pryor an exceptional friend and praising his six-decade career in film and television. Lindstrom added, He delivered impeccable work, but to me, he was my friend one of the best I've ever had. Pryor's work resonated with many, and his talent left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Throughout his long and varied career, Pryor appeared in a wide range of projects. Fans will remember him for his role in Beverly Hills 90210, where he acted from 1994 to 1997, as well as his memorable roles in films like Risky Business 1983 and Below Zero 1987. Most recently, he appeared in the 2021 series The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, showcasing his enduring talent. Nicholas Pryor's legacy in television and film will continue to live on through his work, and he will be deeply missed by both his peers and audiences around the world. Sissy Houston, renowned gospel singer and mother of the late Whitney Houston, passed away at 91 on Monday, October 7th. According to Hollywood Reporter, she died peacefully at her home, surrounded by family after living with Alzheimer's disease. A towering figure in both music and her family's life, Sissy leaves behind a legacy defined by faith, strength, and a remarkable career that spanned over seven decades. In a statement to the press, Sissy's daughter-in-law, Pat Houston said, Mother Sissy has been a strong and imposing figure in our lives, a woman of deep faith and conviction, she cared deeply about her family, her ministry, and her community. Pat also highlighted Sissy's long and impactful career in the music industry, which will continue to resonate in the hearts of her loved ones and her fans. Sissy Houston's musical journey was extraordinary. As a Grammy Award winner and founder of the group Sweet Inspirations, she provided backing vocals for legendary artists like Otis Redding, Dionne Warwick, Jimi Hendrix, Aretha Franklin, and Elvis Presley. Her solo career included collaborations with her daughter Whitney Houston, Barbara Streisand, and Beyonce, showcasing her versatile talent and influence in the music world. Sissy's contributions to gospel and pop music leave behind an indelible mark, and she will be remembered not only for her voice, but for her dedication to her family and faith. Her legacy will continue to inspire generations of musicians and fans alike. Robert Coover, the celebrated novelist known for his mastery of metafiction and experimental literature, passed away in Warwick, England, surrounded by family. His works often deconstructed and reimagined familiar myths, fairy tales, and political narratives, challenging the conventions of storytelling. Coover's most famous novel, The Public Burning, offers a satirical take on the trial of the Rosenbergs, while his short story, The Babysitter, included in his first collection, Prick Songs and Descants, destabilizes traditional storytelling, questioning reality itself. Coover's work garnered immense respect, especially from fellow writers for its innovative approach. William H. Gass, in a 1969 review, praised Coover for using traditional storytelling techniques to create narratives that dismantle the simple legendary world and open up new realms of imagination. His stories became exemplary adventures of the poetic imagination. One of Coover's most notable statements reflects his literary philosophy. We need myths to get by. We need story. Otherwise, the tremendous randomness of experience overwhelms us. Through his work, Coover emphasized the essential role of narrative in making sense of life's unpredictability. Coover's legacy in literature will be remembered for its bold experimentation and imaginative vision. 
His stories, which broke down and rebuilt familiar structures, will continue to influence writers and readers alike for generations to come. His contributions to fiction remain a testament to the power of story in navigating the complexities of the human experience. Pete Rose, one of baseball's all-time greats, was found dead at his home in Las Vegas at the age of 83. The cause of death has not been disclosed. Major League Baseball issued a statement expressing deep condolences to Rose's family, friends, and the many fans who admired his achievements on the field. Known for his fierce determination and remarkable talent, Rose's legacy as a player remains a significant part of baseball history, especially in cities like Cincinnati and Philadelphia, where he made his mark. Rose, a legendary player, also faced significant controversies throughout his life. In 1989, he was banned from Major League Baseball after investigators found that he had bet on games while managing the Reds, a violation of league rules. Although he initially denied these allegations, Rose eventually confessed to betting on baseball, a revelation that cast a long shadow over his career. Additionally, in 2016, disturbing allegations surfaced about Rose's involvement with a teenage girl during the 1970s while he was playing for the Reds. Rose acknowledged the relationship in court documents, but disputed the age of the girl at the time. The lawsuit was eventually settled confidentially. Despite these controversies, Pete Rose's incredible achievements on the field, highlighted by his unmatched competitive spirit and relentless pursuit of excellence, cemented his place as one of baseball's most talented players. His passing marks the end of an era for one of the sport's most complex and unforgettable figures. Dikembe Mutombo, NBA legend, and one of the greatest defensive players in basketball history, has passed away at the age of 58 after battling brain cancer since 2022. Born on June 25, 1966, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Mutombo moved to the U.S. at 21 and played in the NBA for 17 seasons before retiring in 2009. His incredible shot-blocking ability and defensive skills earned him eight NBA All-Star appearances and an induction into the Hall of Fame in 2015. Mutombo began his NBA journey with the Denver Nuggets in 1991, quickly becoming one of the most feared defenders in the league. Over his career, he also played for the Atlanta Hawks, Philadelphia 76ers, New Jersey Nets, New York Knicks, and Houston Rockets. Known for his iconic finger wag after blocking shots, Mutombo's influence on the court was undeniable. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver paid tribute, stating, Dikembe Mutombo was simply larger than life. On the court, he was one of the greatest shot blockers and defensive players in NBA history. Off the court, he dedicated his heart and soul to helping others. Mutombo's impact extended far beyond basketball. He was well known for his humanitarian work, especially his efforts to improve healthcare in Africa, where he built hospitals and helped countless people. His generosity and dedication to giving back made him a beloved figure worldwide, embodying the spirit of using his platform for the greater good. Dikembe Mutombo leaves behind a legacy of greatness on the court and a lasting impact through his charitable work. His contributions will continue to inspire future generations, both in sports and in communities across the globe. Chris Christofferson, legendary singer, songwriter, and actor, passed away at 88. He died peacefully at his home in Maui, Hawaii, on September 28th, surrounded by family. While the cause of death has not been revealed, his influence in music and film is undeniable. Christofferson first gained fame in the late 1960s as a songwriter in Nashville, where he penned iconic hits that others took to the top of the charts. His song, Me and Bobby McGee, became a classic thanks to Janis Joplin, while Sunday Morning Coming Down was made famous by Johnny Cash and Help Me Make It Through the Night was a hit for Sammy Smith. These songs cemented his reputation as one of the most influential songwriters of his era. In addition to his music, Christofferson found success in Hollywood. His most notable film role came in 1976, when he co-starred with Barbara Streisand in the remake of A Star is Born. His performance earned him a Golden Globe, solidifying his status as a multi-talented entertainer. Christofferson's achievements were also recognized with three Grammy Awards, two of which he won for duets with his then-wife, Rita Coolidge. 
The pair was married from 1973 to 1980, during which they shared several musical successes. Throughout his career, Christofferson embodied artistic versatility, excelling as both a performer and songwriter. His work left an indelible mark on country music and film, inspiring generations of artists. Christofferson's legacy will continue to resonate, with his timeless songs and memorable performances standing as a testament to his remarkable talent. Drake Hogeston, the actor best known for his iconic role as John Black on Days of Our Lives, passed away at 70 after a courageous battle with cancer. His family announced his death on Saturday, September 28th, sharing that he faced his illness with incredible strength and determination. Hogeston passed away peacefully, surrounded by loved ones. In a statement posted on the Days of Our Lives Instagram account, his family expressed their deep love for him, calling him the most incredible husband, father, grandfather, and actor. They highlighted his devotion to his craft and his love for the show's audience, as well as his close bond with the cast and crew. The family statement concluded, we love him and will miss him every day of our lives. Drake Hogeston made his debut on Days of Our Lives in 1986, where he played John Black for over 4,200 episodes, according to IMDb. His character became a fan favorite, and his portrayal earned him multiple awards, including Soap Opera Digest Awards for Sexiest Actor in 1994 and 1995, and an award for Favorite Couple in 2005. Hogeston's time on the long-running soap opera made him an unforgettable figure in daytime television. His dedication to his role and his loyal fan base solidified his place as a soap opera legend. As his family, friends, and fans mourn his passing, they remember him not only for his acting, but for the warmth and kindness he brought to those around him. Drake Hogeston's legacy will live on in the hearts of those who loved him and through the memorable performances he delivered during his incredible career. John Ashton, known for his iconic roles in the Beverly Hills Cop films, Midnight Run, 1988, and Someone Very Special, 1987, has passed away at the age of 76. He had recently been diagnosed with cancer, though the type was not disclosed. The news was confirmed by his representatives, who shared, John leaves behind a legacy of love, dedication, and service. His memory will forever be cherished by his wife, children, grandchildren, and extended family. Born on February 22, 1948, in Springfield, Massachusetts, Ashton enjoyed a remarkable 51-year career in film and television, earning over 100 credits. He made his acting debut in 1973 in the horror suspense film The Psychopath, where he played Saget Matthews. However, Ashton is perhaps best remembered for his portrayal of Sergeant John Taggart in the Beverly Hills Cop franchise, starring alongside Eddie Murphy's Axel Foley. Their on-screen partnership became a defining part of the 1980s action comedy genre. Ashton's career continued to flourish, with memorable roles in films like Midnight Run, where he once again displayed his talent for blending humor and drama. He reprised his role as Taggart in Beverly Hills Cop 4, which was released in July 2024 on Netflix giving fans one last chance to see the beloved duo in action. John Ashton's contributions to film and television will be remembered for generations. His talent, dedication, and memorable performances have left an indelible mark on the entertainment world. Catherine Crosby, the actress known for her roles in Operation Mad Ball, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, and Anatomy of a Murder, passed away at 90. She died peacefully at her home in Hillsboro, California, surrounded by her family. Born in Houston, Texas, Catherine began her Hollywood career in the 1950s under the stage name Catherine Grant, starring in a variety of film noir and adventure films. Her acting career slowed after she married Hollywood legend Bing Crosby in 1957. Catherine shifted her focus to family life, raising three children with Bing, Harry, Mary, and Nathaniel. Despite stepping back from the spotlight, she frequently appeared alongside Bing in television Christmas specials and commercials, where they portrayed the quintessential American family. After Bing's death in 1977, Catherine returned to acting, appearing in stage productions like Same Time, Next Year, and State Fair. She also wrote three memoirs about her life with Bing, reflecting on their marriage and family life. Her books offered a personal glimpse into her life with the famed singer and actor. 
In 2000, Catherine married Maurice William Sullivan, who had been a tutor for her children. They remained together until 2010 when Sullivan tragically died in a car accident, which also left Catherine seriously injured. Catherine's children and several grandchildren survive her, carrying on her legacy of love, family, and a graceful presence that touched the lives of many. J.D. Souther, renowned songwriter and singer, passed away at the age of 78 on Wednesday, October 16th, leaving behind a legacy that shaped American music. A member of the Songwriters Hall of Fame, Souther became famous for crafting hits for iconic artists such as James Taylor, Linda Ronstadt, and the Eagles. Souther's songwriting was instrumental in defining the Eagles' sound, contributing to some of their most famous songs like Best of My Love, New Kid in Town, Heartache Tonight, and Doolin' Dalton. These tracks became rock classics and solidified his place as one of the top songwriters of his time. His long-running collaboration with Linda Ronstadt also produced several memorable hits. In addition to his songwriting success, Souther had a notable solo career. His self-titled debut album was released in 1972, followed by Black Rose in 1976, which featured a collaboration with Ronstadt. His biggest solo hits included You're Only Lonely, which peaked at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1979, and Her Town 2, a duet with James Taylor in 1981. Born on November 2, 1945, in Detroit, Souther grew up in Texas before moving to Los Angeles in the late 1960s. There, he formed a close friendship with Glenn Fry of the Eagles, and together they formed the band Long Branch Penny Whistle, releasing a self-titled album in 1970 before Souther embarked on his solo journey. J.D. Souther's contributions to rock and country music are immeasurable, and he will be remembered as a key figure behind the success of many of the biggest artists of the 1970s and 1980s. His legacy will continue to resonate through the timeless music he helped create. Tito Jackson, singer, songwriter, and a key member of the Jackson Five, passed away at the age of 70 on Sunday, October 15th. The news was confirmed by his family, although the cause of death has not been disclosed. Born Toriano Adderell Jackson, Tito began his musical journey as a child, joining his brothers Jackie, Jermaine, Marlon, and Michael to form the legendary Jackson Five. The Jackson Five produced iconic hits during the 1960s and 1970s, including ABC, I Want You Back, and I'll Be There. Tito, while less featured than his brothers, played a vital role as a guitarist and backing vocalist. When Michael left the group, they continued performing as the Jacksons, maintaining their legacy with performances around the world. Tito also pursued a solo career, releasing his debut album Tito Time in 2016. He worked closely with his sons in the group 3T and collaborated with other family members, including his sister Janet Jackson. Despite his own musical successes, Tito often spoke of how deeply the family felt the loss of Michael Jackson, who died in 2009. In recent years, Tito and his brothers continued to honor Michael's memory. Just last week, he posted a message from Munich, where he and his brothers visited a monument dedicated to Michael. Tito wrote, we are deeply grateful for this special place. Reflecting the family's enduring bond and their shared grief over Michael's absence. Tito Jackson leaves behind a legacy of music and love, both as a member of one of the most famous musical families in history and as an artist in his own right. His contributions to the Jackson Five and his solo career will continue to inspire future generations. Chad McQueen, actor and son of Hollywood legend Steve McQueen, passed away at the age of 63 on Wednesday, October 11th. His lawyer, Arthur H. Barents, confirmed the news to the Associated Press. Best known for his role as Dutch in the 1984 hit film The Karate Kid, Chad followed in his father's footsteps, building careers in both acting and professional racing. McQueen's wife, Jeannie Galbraith, along with his children, Chase and Madison, shared a heartfelt tribute on Instagram, expressing their deep love and admiration for him. They highlighted his passion for racing and his dedication as a father and husband, noting that Chad carried forward his father's legacy and instilled his values in his family. Chad also leaves behind his son Stephen R. McQueen, an actor known for his role in The Vampire Diaries. In addition to reprising his role as Dutch in The Karate Kid Part II, 1986, 
Chad produced two documentaries about his father, I Am Steve McQueen, 2014, and Steve McQueen, The Man in Le Mans, 2015. Beyond acting, McQueen was passionate about racing, competing in events like the 24 Hours of Le Mans and the 24 Hours of Daytona. In 2010, he founded McQueen Racing, creating custom cars and motorcycles with his children, Chase and Madison. Chad's son, Chase, posted another tribute, expressing comfort in knowing his father was reunited with Steve McQueen and his sister. Cobra Kai creator John Hurwitz also honored McQueen, sharing his admiration for the actor and the legacy he left behind in the Karate Kid universe. Chad McQueen will be remembered for his contributions to both film and racing, continuing the legacy of his legendary father while creating his own path filled with passion, family, and adventure. James Earl Jones, the legendary American actor known for his deep, iconic voice, passed away at the age of 93 on Monday, October 9th. His death was confirmed by his agent, Barry McPherson. Jones had been battling diabetes for several years and died at home surrounded by his family. The cause of death was not disclosed. Jones is best remembered for lending his powerful voice to two of cinema's most memorable characters. Darth Vader in the Star Wars franchise and Mufasa in Disney's The Lion King, 1994. Despite his commanding voice, Jones faced a severe stutter as a child, leading him to remain mostly silent for nearly 10 years. It was a high school teacher who helped him overcome his speech impediment, sparking his interest in acting. His career began in theater, with his first major role in The Great White Hope, where he portrayed a character based on heavyweight champion Jack Johnson. The role earned him critical acclaim and launched his acting career into new heights. Over the decades, Jones became a celebrated figure in film, television, and theater. Beyond his roles in Star Wars and The Lion King, Jones is also remembered for his role as King Jaff in Coming to America, 1988, alongside Eddie Murphy, and his performances in Conan the Barbarian, 1982, Field of Dreams, 1989, and The Hunt for Red October, 1990. With nearly 200 television roles to his credit, Jones recently reprised his iconic characters. He voiced Mufasa again in the 2019 Lion King remake and returned as King Jaffe in Coming to America, 2021. In 2022, he lent his voice to Darth Vader one last time in the Obi-Wan Kenobi miniseries. James Earl Jones leaves behind a monumental legacy, not only for his incredible talent, but also for overcoming challenges and becoming one of the most beloved figures in Hollywood history. His voice will continue to resonate through generations, forever tied to the timeless characters he brought to life. James Darren, actor, director, and singer, passed away on October 2nd at the age of 88. Known for his role in the sci-fi series, The Time Tunnel, Darren's career spanned over six decades in film, television, and music. He became a teen idol after starring in Hawaiian Vacation and later appeared in Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, and Vanguard. Darren also directed episodes of Beverly Hills, 9020, and Melrose Place. Born in Philadelphia, he studied acting in New York before being signed by Columbia Pictures. He is survived by his wife, Evie, three children, and five grandchildren. Celine Dion, one of the most iconic voices in music history, was born on March 30, 1968, in Charlemagne, Quebec, Canada, as the youngest of 14 children in a musically inclined family. Growing up in a modest but loving household, music was always a significant part of Celine's life. Her mother and siblings formed a band, and by the time she was just five years old, Celine was already performing in her family's piano bar. Her incredible voice and natural talent became evident early on, and by age 12, she co-wrote her first song with her mother and brother. This demo tape landed in the hands of Renee Angelil, a music manager who would later become her mentor and eventually her husband. Angelil mortgaged his home to fund Celine's debut album, believing so deeply in her talent. By the late 1980s, Celine Dion had established herself as a star in the French-speaking world. But it was her transition to English language music in the early 1990s that catapulted her to global fame. Her 1990 album, Unison, marked her English language debut, featuring hits like Where Does My Heart Beat Now? But it was her work on soundtracks for major motion pictures that truly made her a household name. Songs like Beauty and the Beast in 1991, 
and of course, the iconic My Heart Will Go On, from the 1997 blockbuster Titanic, solidified her as one of the greatest voices of her generation. Throughout the 1990s and 2000s, Dion's career was characterized by chart-topping albums, sold-out world tours, and numerous awards, including five Grammy Awards and two Academy Awards. However, despite her immense success, Celine Dion's personal life has been marked by great challenges, particularly regarding health and family. The most significant challenge came in 2016, when her beloved husband, René Angelil, passed away after a long battle with throat cancer. His death left a deep void in Celine's life, as René had been not only her partner, but also the person who had guided her career from the very beginning. Shortly after, she also lost her brother, Daniel Dion, to cancer, compounding her grief. In addition to these personal losses, Celine has faced her own health struggles. In 2022, she announced that she was dealing with a rare neurological disorder called stiff person syndrome. This condition affects the muscles, causing spasms and stiffness that can be extremely painful and debilitating. It has affected her ability to perform and led to the cancellation of several of her planned concert tours, including her much-anticipated return to Las Vegas. Dion has always been known for her resilience, and in public statements, she has emphasized her determination to focus on her health and well-being, but the disease has significantly impacted her career. Fans around the world have expressed concern and support as Celine works through these challenges, hoping for her recovery and return to the stage. Today, Celine Dion remains a beloved figure in the music world, even as she takes time away from the spotlight to focus on her health. Though she has not been performing, she continues to connect with her fans through social media, where she shares updates on her condition and words of encouragement. She remains deeply involved in the lives of her three children, Renee Charles, born in 2001, and twin boys Eddie and Nelson, born in 2010. Despite her personal struggles, Celine has expressed that her role as a mother is her greatest joy and priority. While her health issues have required her to step back from her career, she remains hopeful that with the right treatment, she will one day return to performing. Celine Dion's influence on the music industry is undeniable. With over 200 million records sold worldwide, she is one of the best-selling female artists of all time. Her voice, characterized by its power, range, and emotional depth, has touched millions, and her songs remain timeless classics. From power ballads to emotional love songs, Celine has a rare ability to convey deep emotion through her music, which has earned her fans across generations. In recent years, she has also become a style icon, known for her daring fashion choices and collaborations with high-profile designers. Even as she has stepped away from the stage, her influence in the fashion world has remained strong. Celine's courage in facing her health battles, combined with her unrelenting dedication to her fans and family, has only deepened the admiration and respect she receives from around the globe. As of now, Celine Dion continues to prioritize her health and family life while remaining connected to her fans. Though she has faced significant obstacles in recent years, her legacy as one of the greatest vocalists in history remains untarnished. With a career spanning over four decades, her music, spirit, and contributions to the industry will continue to inspire for years to come. Fans around the world continue to send their love and support hoping that she will once again grace the stage with her extraordinary voice when she is ready. In the meantime, Celine remains a symbol of perseverance, talent, and grace, reminding us all of the power of music and the strength of the human spirit. Whether she's performing in front of thousands or focusing on her health at home, Celine Dion's presence in the world is felt far and wide, and her music continues to resonate in the hearts of millions. Tom Selleck, born on January 29, 1945, in Detroit, Michigan, is an actor best known for his iconic role as Thomas Magnum in the hit 1980s television series Magnum P.I. Raised in a middle-class family, Selleck's path to stardom wasn't straightforward. He initially pursued a business degree at the University of Southern California, where he was also a talented basketball player. However, it was his passion for acting that ultimately steered him toward Hollywood. 
He started with small roles in commercials and television shows in the 1960s and 70s, slowly building his reputation in the industry. Selleck's breakthrough came when he was cast as the charming private investigator Thomas Magnum in Magnum P.I., a role that made him a household name. The show ran for eight successful seasons, from 1980 to 1988, earning Selleck both critical acclaim and a devoted fan base. His portrayal of Magnum, complete with the famous mustache, Hawaiian shirts, and a Ferrari, became one of television's most memorable characters. He won an Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series for his work on the show. Selleck's rugged good looks and charismatic presence also made him a sought-after actor in films during the 1980s and 1990s, starring in hits like Three Men and a Baby and Quigley Down Under. Beyond his acting career, Selleck is known for his deep sense of privacy and commitment to family life. He has been married to his wife, Jilly Mack, since 1987, and they share a daughter.